Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Doctor is In by Scott Donnelly I awoke suddenly to something cold and metallic touching my chest. I gasped and sat up. When my eyes adjusted, I saw the doctor. She pulled the metallic bell part of her stethoscope away from the top of my chest and let the neckline of my shirt rise back up. What's going on here? I asked her. Shh, the doctor whispered. You've been hurt. That's funny, I thought. I didn't remember getting hurt. How? I asked. The doctor smiled at me. Her smile was small, but her dimples were big. It was a familiar smile, a comforting one. But behind it, I knew there was more to this appointment than met the eye. I looked around briefly, realizing I was in an enclosed room. Most of the lights were off, and only a slit of daylight was coming through the window blinds. I'm going to have to run some tests, the doctor said. This appointment won't be quick. I continued to lay there as the doctor revealed a medical bag. As she dug through its contents, I tried to feel my body, trying to detect any pain or injuries, but for some reason I couldn't. All I felt was tired. Have you been getting enough exercise? The doctor calmly asked me as she extracted a small scope from her bag. Yes, ma'am, I responded as she used the scope to look into each of my ears. Have you been eating well? She then asked me, using the same scope to look into my nose. Yes, I said. Well, I mean, I enjoy the occasional cheeseburger. Do you use extra cheese, sir? The doctor asked me, using the same scope to then look into my mouth. Did she not care about sterilization? What kind of a doctor's appointment was this? I pulled my face away from the scope. Yes, I admitted. I used extra cheese. The doctor smiled. Well, that would explain a lot then. I was confused. She was just staring at me with a strange yet pretty smile. Well, what does my consumption of extra cheese explain? It would explain all the spider boils on your leg. My stomach sank. Spider boils? I exclaimed. I sat up and ripped the sheets off my lower half. Up and down my legs were dozens of pulsating boils. Within their fleshy, bubbly confines, I could see dark things swishing about. Th th there, are, there are spiders in those? Oh, yes, the doctor said, and if I were to pop them, the spiders would all come out. But if I did that, they'd probably get into the walls and electrical outlets and our power would go out. Oh, I said. I let myself fall back to a lying down position. Extra cheese caused this? I asked the doctor, confused and growing uneasy with this appointment. The more and more I tried to remember, I couldn't think of how I even ended up here. Last I knew, I was at work, came home, tried to rest, and now… Oh, and we'll probably have to surgically remove the alien heart we put in you, the doctor so casually interrupted. What alien heart? I asked. When you first came in, she said, you were scheduled for surgery, but one of our other doctors put an alien heart in you, by mistake. What? I exclaimed. I tried to sit up again. I need to leave, I said. I can't be here anymore. I don't know what's going on. This all has to be a bad dream or something. I'm so sorry. You can't leave, the doctor said. You won't be able to without these. She held up a pair of shoes. My shoes? I asked. 
I don't need those. I'll just walk out of this nightmare appointment barefoot. The doctor laughed at me. Well, that's going to be a problem because your feet are still in these shoes. What? I screamed, throwing the sheets off my spider boil covered legs. They ended at my ankles, withering away to just wilty strands of skin. My feet were gone. I looked back up at the doctor. As professional as she acted and as innocent as she looked, this woman was absolutely nuts. Bonkers. We can put your feet back on if you'd like, the doctor added, but it's not going to be cheap. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar surgery here, and I'll need the cash up front. I became loud and unruly with her. Let me go! I just, I need to... Help! Someone! This doctor is crazy! Just then, the door to the doctor's office burst open with energy and ferocity. In the doorway, a futuristic soldier posed in the shadows, wearing heavy armor, a helmet with a visor, and wielding a gigantic neon-colored laser cannon. Did someone say the crazy, smelly doctor must perish? The soldier growled. Then, without warning or even waiting for an answer, he opened fire, shooting lasers every which way into the room. I covered my head, but all I could hear were the heavy laser blasts and the screaming of the soldier and doctor at each other. The lasers did stop, but the screaming continued. It sounded more like arguing, like siblings bickering. I uncovered my head just as the light in the room was switched on. Then I knew things had gotten out of hand. My wife stood in the doorway, shouting at the kids to stop fighting with each other. I climbed out of bed and joined her side. Guys! I shouted, loud enough to catch their attention. My six-year-old daughter, dressed in her white doctor's costume, wearing plastic glasses and a toy stethoscope around her neck, stood in the middle of our bedroom. My eight-year-old son, dressed in his science fiction soldier Halloween costume and holding a brightly colored laser tag gun, stood next to her. Both of them faced my wife and I. What's with all the arguing? I asked. She got to play with you enough, my son complained. It's my turn. I wasn't done, my daughter whined to my wife and I. We were in the middle of a doctor's appointment and, and he just came in and started shooting lasers everywhere. As a second argument began, my wife was the one to shut it down immediately. No one was supposed to be playing with dad, she said. He worked an overnight shift last night and was trying to get some sleep. I already told you guys to wait until he wakes up to play with him. The kids just stood there, now ashamed that they'd woken me. Sorry, Dad, they both said. I just smiled as I looked at them. Dressed up and immersed within play scenarios that required their minds to be creative and energetic. In the modern times, it was almost like a lost art amongst children. It's fine, I said, turning to my wife. As a matter of fact, I'm without feet, infected with spider and alien organs, and the only two people in the world who can save me are this doctor and this soldier. The kids were ecstatic and bounced around the room with excitement. My wife just smiled and left the room. Dad, quick! My daughter yelled. Get back on the bed. We need to get your feet attached. The aliens are going to be back to harvest your organs any minute. What? I exclaimed, hopping back into the bed. Don't worry, I'll hold them off, my son snarled as he opened a barrage of laser cannon blasts out into the hallway. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey, weirdos. 
Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.